his first coming, and you better believe it, they can't stop his second coming. The signs and the warnings are all around us. We are looking for the sounding of the fourth trumpet, whereby something in the galaxies will clash according to the scriptures and to our sun and the moon and the stars, and they will affect the lightning by day and by night. We see all the brush fires and the land fires and the contamination of the seas. Birds falling out of the sky. We've been seeing that for years and they're getting worse. But what some of you may not have known, with all these disasters that we are seeing, with the burnings of the lands and the, and the fires and thousands of sea fishes and whales along the seashore, birds falling out of the sky, they are part of the first three trumpets that these things would take place. This is why I say we're looking for the fulfillment of the fourth trumpet because we have been seeing the first three trumpets for a while now. The Lord is soon to come. But in Matthew 22, in this year looking forward, We want this to be a year of progress, a year of change for the better. And as an offering tonight in your hearts, as the spiritual plate passes you by, I want you to put in a healthy offering of excuses. This year coming, the Spirit of the Lord wants us to get rid of excuses that we may go forward. And when you get rid of excuses, you get rid of a lot of things. Because there are a lot of reasons why people make excuses. Some people make excuses because they are afraid to try. Some make excuses because they are full of fear. Some people make excuses because they are afraid to fail. Some make excuses because of a lack of knowledge or understanding. Some make excuses because of doubt, inferiority, no self-esteem. Some make excuses because they're simply lazy. But whenever you see excuses, many times there are a lot of things that those excuses are covering. Some people make excuses because they don't know how to accept criticism. Some make excuses because they don't understand what it is sometimes to miss the mark 
or to make a mistake. They think the whole world has come to an end and because they feel as though maybe their wrong actions or wrong responses causes them to look like nothing, they make excuses. Some people make excuses because when you correct them, they feel like you're, they're bad, that they're being attacked. What do I often tell you? Don't give me an excuse. Just say if you got the job done or you didn't. If an excuse is needed, then I'll ask for one. But sometimes we use excuses to cover up the facts. You see, that's how Saul missed out on the kingdom. When he was corrected by God, he made excuses. We use excuses to cover up our slack. But the Spirit of God says, excuses won't do. They only hinder you. They only hurt you. Understand what I mean. Now, sometimes there are reasonable excuses. But I'm talking about when we lean upon these things. Or, even though there are reasonable excuses, it still doesn't eliminate the fact you didn't get the job done. Or, this didn't take place, or that didn't take place. Some excuses are understandable. But they should never take the place of accomplishment. Never. If you're doing something and it doesn't work, admit it didn't work. If an excuse is needed, if there's a reason, don't give it unless you ask. Don't make a habit of always having a story as to why you didn't succeed, or why this didn't happen, or why that didn't happen. You see, what happened was nobody asked you what happened. They asked you, did you do it? Did you complete it? Lord, deliver me from the hindering spirit of excuses. Understanding that because you have an excuse doesn't clear you in the situation. Matthew, I feel a virtue. I must be saying something. Because a lot of times you may look at somebody as being fault finding, nitpicking, but all they're trying to get you to do is let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Because what you don't understand is that every time something is presented to you, it's never your fault. Oh, there's always a reason for it. To hear you say it. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Read. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. Now Jesus is teaching them by parables, and he's talking concerning the kingdom of heaven. Are you listening? So I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven tonight. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Uh -huh. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. You know, some people feel as though they're all alone. They feel as though no one loves them, nobody understands them. But the truth of the matter is, every time somebody reaches out their hand, they do not come. Every time there's an invitation, they do not come. Every time the Spirit of the Lord pulls upon their heart, they do not come. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a king who made a feast for his son, and he sent forth the servant, and he called them that were invited to the wedding, and they would not come. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. So what is that like unto? No man can come unto God except the Spirit draw you. So what's he saying here? The king, almighty God, brings forth a feast. And the preachers go forth and preach. Uh -huh. The Spirit of God goes forth to draw. But there are some that would not come and they were invited. I feel the virtue. In other words, they should have been at that wedding. 
They should have been in that meeting. Because God called them to the meeting. The king invited them. Now many times we say to ourselves, I didn't know, but in your heart you know you felt something. You felt the pull, or you felt the convicting power of God. We can only see the outside, but God sees every thought, every action, every movement that goes on in the inside of your heart. And he knows if you accepted the invitation or if you rejected it. He knows if you've given an excuse as to why you couldn't come. He bid them to come, but they would not. If you brave people, turn to God now. We point the finger at God a lot of times. See, God has given out a lot of invitations. And there have been a lot of no-shows. I feel the virtue for some reason. I feel prophetic. I feel the virtue. What am I trying to say? That's saying that some of you are sitting here, that's why I feel the virtue. God has been dealing with some of you on certain situations. He's been talking to your heart, pulling on your heart, but you haven't accepted the invitation. You haven't humbled yourself and given in to the will of God. I feel the virtue. Some have been saying, God, give me direction. God, you know all things. God, strengthen me. God, guide me. But God has been trying to show you the way all the time that you have been rejecting the invitation. You haven't shown up yet. What does that mean? You haven't submitted to his will yet. I feel the virtue. You haven't given in to the Holy Ghost yet. You're still holding on to something. There's still something there that's hindering you and leaves you in the position of thinking one day, one day, one day, but that one day may not come. Today is the day of salvation. And the day you hear his voice, don't you harden your heart. They would I keep feeling the virtue. When I say I feel the virtue, you know what that means? That means the Holy Ghost is letting me know I'm saying something that is 100% correct. And I keep feeling the virtue when I keep saying they did not come. May God have mercy on all of us and any of us who is, uh, what's the word for it? We are quenching the Holy Spirit. God is pulling on you. He's been talking to you. He's been pulling on you. But you would not come. You're not listening. You're making excuses. I feel a strong virtue. I feel a strong virtue. The Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. And I'm 100% sure that the Spirit of God is talking to some of you. To, amen. Remember, let His will be done and not yours. Humble yourself. You don't want to play with your soul's salvation. You don't want to turn down the invitation of the Most High God. But they would not come. Jesus said to the children of Israel, how many times would I have gathered you under my wings like a hen or a brood? But you wouldn't let me. The scripture says, God said, I would have cleansed you I would have purged you and gave you strength, but you wouldn't be cleansed. I feel a virtue. You wouldn't be purged. Don't get upset with God because you're going through the same old thing when it's you that won't let it go. It is you that won't accept the invitation. Read. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. Now stop. Again, God sent forth people to tell you. Oh, what a merciful God. You know, turn them down. The Holy Ghost said, you have not accepted the invitation. But yet, God has come again to get your attention. To try to correct you. To try to bring you out. He sent again. 
If you didn't know something about God, with all fear, let me explain it to you. The scripture says, if a person is caught on, is, is stuck on causing division and going against the word of God, going against God, warn them once, you warn them twice, then you reject them. You ever notice that uh, most, most companies will reject you after two bad checks? They won't take it anymore. It's a biblical principle. If you're a manager on a job or if you raise a lot of children or if you've been around a lot of people, you watch it. If you really put your foot down for real, you know, you may give a lot of rebukes, but when you really put your foot down that one time and you mean it. And then you really put your foot down the second time and you mean it. Most of the time, if they do it a third time, they're going to keep doing it. You can just turn away and walk away because if they don't stop it there, they're not going to stop it unless God makes a major change. They will continue to do it. It's very dangerous not to take heed to the Holy Ghost. Saul rejected counsel two times. He lost his soul. King Solomon, God said, I came to you twice. He lost the kingdom. Came to David once. David humbled himself. And he took his rebuke. When God comes to you a second time, you're going to play with it. When he comes to you a second time, you're going to take it, eat, take it lightly. Think about it. You ever known a liar? Or somebody that wasn't right or fair? You tried it once. You tried it twice. They said they wouldn't do it again, but they did. You believed them, and they kept, after that second time, they kept doing it. They kept doing it. That scripture is real. Once you get warned a real second time, if you are God, you're going to change. And if you don't, you're going to be continually in that way for a long time. He said, I sent them again, servants, to tell them which were bidden. Behold, what's that? I have prepared my dinner. Uh -huh. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. The king said, I've got everything you need. All you need to do is show up. God says, I've sacrificed my only begotten son, shed the blood, yep. went to hell for you and came back again. All you got to do is show up. Yeah. I have defeated the enemy. Through me, you can do all things, said the Lord. Yeah. You're more than conquerors. I've given you all power over the enemy. All you have to do is show up. Yeah, I feel a virtue. Yeah. All you have to do is trust. The battle is not yours, it's mine, said the Lord. All you have to do is come to my dinner. The food is ready. The table is ready. Whatever you need to overcome whatever trial or situation in your life is at my table. All you have to do is come. Show up. And do you know some people have the nerve not to show up? Read it, preacher. But they made light of it. I'm, and breaking, went, I'm breaking this down now. What does that mean? But when the king gave the order, the people that were invited, they didn't take that as an honor. The king has invited them. God has given his only begotten son, shed his blood for us, sacrificed us. They didn't take that as an honor. The king has invited us. But they made what? Light of it. Took it for granted. Didn't take it serious. I feel a virtue. May God word my mouth. They didn't take it serious. They played with the Holy Spirit. They played with the invitation of the king. I 
Oh, I got an invitation from the king. Oh, you're the king. He sent me two invitations. Can you believe that? Two invitations. Guess what? I didn't even go. But he sent them, but I didn't even go. You think that's funny? There was your next door neighbor. It was the king who sent the invitations. And they did not show us. Now, but they made light of it. How many times have we made light of conviction? How many times have we made light of a pull of God? How many times have we made light of the word of God? Listen, they made light of it, and what did they do, preacher? And went their ways. They went their own ways. And in the book of Luke, it describes this. They began to make excuses. Here it says, and they went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. The book of Luke said, one man said, I would come to the wedding, but I just got married. You understand. I just got married. So I think I'll stay home. You do understand that this way, that this invitation is coming from the king, don't you, don't you, sir? Well, yeah, the king will understand. Another said, I just bought brand new oxen. I need to go and, and, and see how they work. Uh, how can we use that in modern day time? I just, oxen was used for their livelihood, you see? I just got a brand new job. I want to be sure I'm rested. Just got a promotion. I got a brand new job and I can't make it. But you know you were given a special limitation by the king. The king can understand. Another one said, I just bought some land. I just purchased some merchandise and some land. Just got a brand new house. Y'all understand, I'm hanging up pictures. And they all went, I feel a virtue, their way, instead of taking heed to the invitation that came from the king. You see, when you're fully feeling God pulling on you and working on you, you need to understand who it is that's pulling on you. And you better give him all the respect. See, it's not like your neighbor pulling on you. Or your brother pulling on you. This is God Almighty knocking at your door. You better be careful how you treat that invitation. I keep feeling a virtue. You see, when God pulls on a lot of us, we go our own way. Some to the streets, some do this, some do that, some doing that, some are too busy for this. And we take God lightly. When you refuse to follow God, you take them lightly. When you refuse to take heed to God's word, you take them lightly. But this year, God says he wants you to get rid of your excuses. Yes, Lord. That you may go forward. Read. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. And the rest of the people took the servants of the king and fought them. Slew them. Now, how can we liken to that? Well, we know that when God sent the prophets to the people of God and to the children of Israel, they killed all the prophets. The prophets and preachers were persecuted. And the rest of the remnant destroyed the servants of God. How can we liken that to the day? Huh? Well, the rest of those who refused the invitation of the poor from God just completely blocked out the conviction of God. Huh? Completely turned their heart and mind away from the things of God. I don't care what that preacher says. I don't care what the word of God says. I don't care. I got my own life to live. Don't you understand the life you live didn't come from you? Yeah. Brother Preacher, I feel a virtue. Son, I'm 100% sure that the Lord is trying to talk to somebody. 
Why is that? Because evidently somebody has an invitation you need to open. And you need to accept it. Time out for the excuses of living right, of giving your heart to God Almighty. And you know, it's a beautiful thing if he's still reaching out for you. That means he has a love for you. That also means he knows what you don't know. Read. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrong. When the king heard what? When he heard the excuses about the land, the merchandise, the wife, the oxen. When he heard how people rose up and rebelled against the servant. When the king heard all these people denying the invitation. He was angry. Now, we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. So that when God sees all of these people rejecting the pull of God, he's angry. Read. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrong that he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. The second coming of Christ, he's coming with judgment. When he realized that they didn't want his invitation, those that were invited, he wiped the dust off his feet and he pushed them to the side. As the song says, you better live for Jesus while you can. The day you hear his voice, you better accept it. And my God, if anybody in here, if God's been dealing with you and you know it, I think you better take time out and talk to him and hear what he has to say. Because it could be that he'll give you over and allow your own sins to wipe you out like these people. Read it. Then said he to his servants. What did he say? The way is ready. The ready is ready. But they which were bid were not worthy. But those that were called were not worthy. Break it down. Because you don't accept it, the party is not going to stop. Mm. Because you did not receive the invitation and accept it, rather, the feast is still going on. If you don't go, somebody else will. If you don't do it, somebody else will. But God's not stopping. For me, he's not stopping for you. I feel a virtue. Understand that. Now, we can be left behind by a lot of things, but you don't want to be left behind by God. He said, I still have space. And so he told them, what did he tell them? Go. Go. Therefore, into uh -huh. the highway. Go into the highway. And many as you shall find. And whoever you can find. Be now, to the marriage. You fight them to the marriage. So those servants went out. They went out. Into the highway. Yes, they did. And gathered together all as many as they found. Uh -huh. Both bad uh -huh. and good. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was furnished with guests. They went out there and got everybody. The hall. The lane, the lane, they got everybody, both, both, both good and both bad. They got everybody. So you see when there's a harvest coming in, it's going to be some wheat and some tares. Some good and some bad, but God gives the invitation. What does that mean? He gives everybody a chance. I said he gives everybody a chance. Whether you're good or bad, he gives everybody a chance. Because it's not God's will that any man should perish. And he invited them all to come. Read. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. No. You see, God, is not, he's going to deal with you and work on you until you get complete deliverance. Not only did the king say, go out and invite more people. But then the king went out to examine those that were invited. God's going to examine you through and through that you may be real. And as the king went forth, 
He saw a man who didn't have a torment. Now this man was not initially invited at first. He was not invited at the first. How many times have we said, I didn't ask to come? Hey, but you're here. I feel the virtue. And so the Lord looked at him and he said, didn't you know that this was a wedding? They were look, I, I didn't ask to come, but you knew this was a wedding. Well, yeah, a wedding for the king's son. Yeah. Then why didn't you come dressed? And they cast him out. And that was weeping and laughing. The man was speechless. And they cast him out. Get rid of your excuses. Maybe you weren't invited to the wedding, young man, but you knew it was a wedding. You should have come respectful and prepared. We must learn to respect the Spirit of God, people. And in this year, God wants you to go forward, but you must get rid of, everybody say it. You must get rid of excuses. We're so grateful for the love of God. We're so thankful for that precious name that he has given to us with all power. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. What will you do? How long will we hide behind excuses? How long will we accept the failure when we don't have to? How long will we not trust in God to see us through? Lord, remove the excuses. Remove the excuses. I feel the virtue. Remove the excuses. Lord, remove the excuses. This year, let me fly as high as I can. On this year, I'm going forward. And I'm not leaning on excuses. I'm not leaning on excuses. I'm not going to accept failure. I'm not going to let the things of life tell me I can't succeed because I know I can. I'm going to analyze myself and be true about what I see. And if it's not right, I'll ask you to deliver me, but I won't make any excuses. Help me, Lord, no excuses. No
thank you.
bring success in you. Put it aside, all the excuses. Because all the promises of God are yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Follow the Spirit of God. He will never lead you wrong. Turn to